Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I think it's afternoon everywhere across the country. Uh, this is Allison Buddy from the Connecting Kids to Covers team. Thank you so much for joining us today. What a crowd. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get started, so thanks for your patience. We just wanted to get as many folks on the line as possible. And I'm going to turn it over to Donna Cohen-Ross. Great. Thanks, Allison. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Donna Cohen-Ross. I'm a Senior Policy Advisor in the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services. I am delighted to welcome everyone to our webinar this afternoon. We're very excited to be sharing plans with you for our children's health coverage outreach activities for the coming year. And judging by the response to our invitation, you're pretty excited too. More than 600 people are registered for today's webinar. We've got representation from every single state in the District of Columbia. We've got many of our CHIPRA outreach grantees, our tribal grantees, state Medicaid and CHIP agencies, health care providers, school districts, community organizations, United Way agencies, advocacy groups, and many others. This is quite a crowd. We are very excited about this level of interest and enthusiasm. Um, but before we dive into today's program, I want to turn it over to Allison Betty, who you um, just heard, and you're going to meet her properly in a few minutes, but she's got some housekeeping details for us. Great. Thanks, Donna. Yes, the technical details of a webinar, right? Uh, so I just want to run through a couple of them. Because we have so many folks on the phone today, we're going to keep your lines muted throughout the presentation just to cut down on background noise. We will have a Q&A portion at the end of the presentation, of course, but you can also ask questions throughout the webinar by typing in the question box in your control panel. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. And we're going to work throughout the webinar to compile these questions and address them as we get to that Q&A section. There's also a feature that allows you to kind of virtually raise your hand. It's that little hand icon in your control panel. Uh, so you can do it there, too, and that will just put you in a queue for questions, and we'll do our best to call in as many people as possible when we get to Q&A. If you are having any technical difficulties or you just have some basic comments or questions during the presentation, you can use that feature also to just get our organizers' attention, and they'll contact you directly to get you any help that you need. Uh, and if for any reason you don't have access to some function or something's not working properly, uh, Riley Green is kind of the master of our tech today, and she can be reached at Riley Green, R-I-L-E-Y dot Green, G-R-E-E-N-E, -E -E, there's an E on the end of that green, at G-M-M-B dot com. Okay, Riley Green at G-M-M-B dot com if anyone is having trouble. And um, her contact information is also on the invitation of the webinar if you want to go back in your email. I think that covers housekeeping, Donna. Thanks. Thanks so much, Allison. Now it's my great privilege to introduce the person who's going to get this conversation started. Uh, Cindy Mann is Deputy Administrator at CMS and Director of the Center for Medicaid and CHIP Services. Um, many of you know Cindy. For those of you who don't, Cindy is an ardent champion for children and for ensuring that all children have access to health coverage and high quality health care. She has a few opening remarks to share with us. and so. Um, welcome, Cindy. Thanks, Donna. Um, thank you, um, Allison. And um, let me just echo Donna's enthusiastic welcome. Um, it is great to have such a turnout um, at this event. So good afternoon, everyone. It is my great ple pleasure to be with you today as we launch a new phase of our Connecting Kids to Coverage campaign. So during the next hour, what we're going to do is hear about some exciting plans for the coming year about new outreach opportunities that we think are certain to re-energize us um, and, and perhaps you as well as we work together on getting eligible children enrolled in Medicaid and CHIP. As we all know, of course, and you're, you're here on the phone, so we know you agree with this, that health insurance is really fundamental. When kids are covered, they can get care when they're sick, and most importantly, of course, they can also get the preventive services that they need to stay healthy so that they can fully participate in school, in sports, and in all sorts of childhood activities. Before we hear about the new plans, I just want to take a few minutes to remind us about the strides we've made together towards enrolling all eligible children in Medicaid and in CHIP, which is the goal that was set by Secretary Sebelius when she issued the Connecting Kids to Coverage Challenge to the nation right after the Children's Health Insurance Program Reauthorization Act, otherwise known as CHIPRA, was signed into law. 
since then, we've indeed come a long way and over some rough terrain, as we know, because of the economy. And now, thanks to our partnership with states and community organizations, providers, and many others, we have, in fact, fewer uninsured children in America than ever before. And according to the Urban Institute, which has been tracking children's health coverage trends, the number of children eligible for Medicaid and CHIP but not enrolled dropped from nearly 5 million children in 2008 to 4.4 million in 2010. And this occurred, of course, during a period when the total number of eligible children increased by over 4.5 million uh, children due to, in large measure, to economic pressures facing families. So we had more eligible children, and even though we had more eligible children, we had fewer uninsured children in 2010 relative to 2008. And related to that, of course, is that we've seen participation rates in Medicaid and CHIP steadily increase from just shy of 82% in 2008 to almost 86% in 2010. During this time, a growing number of states, some in every region in the country, have reached or topped a 90% participation rate among eligible children. So uh, right now on your screen, you can see a page from our Insured Kids Now website. It's an interactive tool that can show you the participation rate in every state. You can go online and see where your state stands. The boost to participation rate is a tremendous achievement and something that you all ought to be very proud of. Along with state efforts to simplify enrollment and renewal procedures, outreach efforts are solidly behind this progress. All that you've done to embed outreach in school-based activities to use technology to link children to coverage to host community-wide telethons and more has indeed been paying off. The data is very clear. But of course, there's more to be done. We've got over 4 million children eligible for the programs um, who still need to be signed up. And among them are groups whose rates of coverage are increasing but still lag behind. Latino children, American Indian and Alaska Native children, and our teenagers need special attention. And that brings us to today's webinar. Today, with our colleagues from the CMS Office of Communications, we've been working to, uh, together with our Office of Communication uh, folks, we've been working to craft the next stage of our Connecting Kids to Coverage campaign. And to help us, I'm really thrilled to share that we have brought on board a very dedicated and extremely knowledgeable group of communications experts. We have the team at Fleshman Hillard with great experience in helping to promote enrollment in benefit programs like SNAP. And with them also comes GMMB, a group that many of you already know as perhaps the most seasoned professionals when it comes to children's health insurance coverage, outreach, and enrollment activities. Whether you are one of our CHIPRA grantees, a longstanding state or community partner, or are new to outreach activities, you will have access to the activities, the materials, and the specialized assistance that this wonderful team has to offer. With their help, I know we're really going to be able to accomplish even more for the eligible children and their families across the country. And of course, this is a big year for enrollment moving forward um, for children and for others. So there's going to be a lot of attention, a lot of excitement about um, health, health insurance enrollment and presents some really exciting new opportunities for all of us. So I urge each and every one of you to join us and to also let us know how we can continue to be of value to you. So the new partnership. And again, thank you for joining today and for all the work that you do for children. Thanks so much, Cindy. Um, I know we have a lot to cover. And so I think now's the time to really dive right in. And I'm going to turn it over to Allison Betty, who, um, who is with GMMB. Uh, and has been working in this area for a very long time. She is going to be um, walking us through uh, what the new campaign, the new phase of the campaign is going to look like, and most importantly, how each and every one of you can play a role. So um, Allison, it's all yours. Great, great. Thanks, Donna. Let's, uh, let's get to work. Uh, hi, everyone. We are really thrilled to be talking with all of you. Um, some of you we know, some of, some of you are new to us, and uh, we are really excited to be doing this work this year. And uh, great to have such a crowd on the phone. And, and as Cindy said, what an important year to be doing this work to help connect kids and their families with low cost and free health coverage through Medicaid and CHIP. 
here's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to walk you through an overview of the campaign. This is really a continuation of the Connecting Kids to Coverage campaign that's happened over the past couple of years. Uh, but our aim is to re-energize, refresh, and create a drumbeat of solid activities throughout the year. So we're going to walk you through the year ahead. Uh, we're going to give you a sense of our campaign strategy, explain the waves of activities that we've designed uh, to help energize some efforts that are already happening across the country, discuss the materials that we have in the works to help support the work that you're already doing, and provide information uh, a little bit about how we can help. We've got a field team here we're going to introduce to you today uh, who is ready to go uh, to help you with the activities that you have on the ground and with these three waves of activities we've designed moving ahead. So let's talk about 2013. Our objectives, of course, are to raise awareness among eligible families about children's health coverage under Medicaid and CHIP. We want to ultimately increase enrollment and retention in the program and provide support to local and statewide outreach and education efforts. We know that many of you have been doing this work for many, many years. And uh, we don't want to work toward a campaign where we're just adding a lot of effort here. What we really want to do is build on what's already working and help you along the way. Uh, so while we're going to walk through some activities today, we want you to understand that we really are here to help you with the work that you have and really want to meet you where you are, want to get a sense of the kind of needs that you have so that we're able to respond. And of course, re-energize and refresh, which we all need time to time. And in, in, this, in this year of 2013, with so much on the horizon in 2014, really want to refresh and continue this campaign that supports and amplifies ongoing outreach efforts on the ground. Our overall strategy is pretty simple. Um, we are developing some tailored activities and ideas to make organizing simple and streamlined and effective. Again, we know you've been doing this a long time. We want to help where we can and what makes sense to you. Work with all of you to support your communications needs and activities. And focus as much as we can on eligible children who have some of the lower participation rates, particularly Hispanic families and families with teens. We've been talking about this for many years. And and that is where we see some lower rates. So we're going to spend some extra time, um, some extra research, and some extra work to help amplify efforts in that area. And of course, lay the groundwork for changes that are coming in 2014. This is a real transition year in many ways. And we want to be sure that what we're doing um, does do a little bit of a nod to what's coming ahead. Overall, we just want to add value to the work that you're doing now. We've outlined a few ways that we're going to do that proactively, but we want to continue to hear from you. We're going to work on some new campaign toolkits. We'll do them around each of the waves and the themes we're going to walk through in a minute. Um, we're going to continue to do trainings and webinars. This is the first of a handful that we'll do throughout the day, or excuse me, throughout the year, uh, on things like media and organizing and partnerships. We have a team here that will be working on national organi organizational and corporate partnerships, where we're going to help develop some of those relationships and make those connections across states, across the country. We have a great team at Fleischman Hillard that's going to help on national earned media support as well as supporting some local markets. And offer the expertise that we can through the research that has been do done over the years on reaching some of our key harder to reach audiences. Our overall theory here is that we need an integrated approach. It's why we're going to walk through these waves of activities. We want to be sure that at the same time we're reaching our target audiences in different ways so that they get the uh, the feel of a broader campaign, and as we all know, to get somebody to go online or pick up the phone to make that call, they need to see these messages um, from many places and many times. So we want to coordinate the activities around the materials, the digital engagement, earned media outreach, grassroots organizing, the organizational and corporate outreach, all of those pieces that can come together at these rallying points throughout the year to reach our target audiences and get as many kids enrolled as possible. So I'm going to turn it over now to, to Sandy One uh, here in our office, who's going to walk you through the waves and what those look like. Sandy is our campaign manager, and um, she's going to give you a sense not only of the overall strategy, but what this could really look like on the ground. Great. Thanks, Allison. And um, our outreach waves are really designed and anchored um, in three waves of activities. And we're designing this around times when parents are thinking about their kids' health care needs. So we have cold and flu season in the winter. We've got allergies and asthma in the spring and back to school in the summer. 
but we know that you all have activities that you plan throughout the year. And so um, we realize that these seasons are not the same everywhere, and we interpret these very liberally. I think what we um, have in mind here is to really synchronize a lot of the efforts that are going on on the ground, um, but we recognize that you as our partners are really the heart of this campaign. And you are reaching families and children where they live, work, and play. And so we really, as Allison had said, want to work alongside you and make sure we're bringing value to the work that you're already doing. But again, by pulling this all together within these waves of activity, we're feeling like we can bring, bring a national, elevate this to a national campaign that will really uh, achieve our goals to enroll more um, children and families in Medicaid and CHIP. So moving on to um, some ideas that we have for events. These would be um, events that we would create templates for and help you through the process of planning. One would be maybe a partnership kickoff with a pharmacy or a back-to-school retailer, a spring telethon. But one of the reasons that we're having this kickoff webinar is we really want to hear from you and we want to know what activities you're doing on the ground, um, how we can really brainstorm with you and what's going to work best for these waves. And we'll have contact information later that you can um, share. But we also encourage you to send in some chat um, questions and suggestions that we can all discuss together. Um, as we said, this is the beginning of a very um, exciting year for outreach, and we're really looking forward to really partnering with all of you who have been doing this for so long on the ground. Another thing we'll provide is a suite of new materials, and um, we want these to accompany our campaign efforts, but we're also looking at this to really simplify the messages, streamline the look. Um, we know that flyers, cards, um, posters work best, and we know that it really is best to be able to customize these to the state program in the local context. So we are um, thinking through ways that we can make these the most useful as possible. All of this material will be available on the Insure Kids Now website, um, so we will be posting that. And um, we're really looking forward to building all of these resources, um, launching this campaign with you, and working together with you as we move throughout the year. Um, and now to get a little flavor of what this campaign will look like on the ground, we want to go into our field organizing, and I'm going to hand this over to Donna so she can talk a little bit about our target market state. Thanks so much, Sandy. Um, oh, there's Mac right there. Um, again, a, a key component of this campaign, really the, the most important component, will be the work that we all do together on the ground in local communities. And that's where your interaction with families actually is what gets children involved. As you'll hear in a moment, there are going to be many ways for you to participate no matter where you're located. But we'll be concentrating uh, a bit more intensively in 10 target media markets in six states. And these are the six states with the largest numbers of children who are, still el who are eligible but still not involved in Medicaid and CHIP. Um, while all the details are not completely worked out yet, we are working with um, the states that you see highlighted up on your screen, um, and those are Florida, Georgia, New York, Ohio, Texas, and California. Um, we are working um, to pin down target markets in those states. Some of them have been um, have already been identified, but we're still looking at um, some additional ones. Uh, to give you a sense, in Florida, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing some special activities in Tampa and Orlando. In Atlanta, we'll be working um, in the Atlanta area, um, which is a pretty broad area. Um, in, in New York, the, cap the capital area, Albany and surrounding counties. Um, in Ohio, will be in Cincinnati and Youngstown. In Texas, we will be in Houston and one additional target market, which we're still um, looking at. And in California, we still have some uh, work to do to identify where we will be um, putting some, again, some extra attention. Um, but I want to say um, at the outset, and you'll hear more about this in a moment, that extra attention is really um, our efforts to model some of the activities that we want to share and promote and work with people 
all over the country to, um, to make happen in their local communities. And there will be um, a lot of uh, opportunity for, uh, for us to share materials and um, uh, technical assistance, again, no matter where you may be in the country. Um, and so, uh, and, and I think also that one of the pieces that we, um, that we really feel very, um, we feel very strongly about and, and very enthused about is the opportunity for peer learning, for outreach partners to learn from outreach partners. Um, and so uh, one of the things that um, we, we did want to take a little time during this hour to, uh, to talk about is where some of the groups that um, have been doing outreach for a long time see themselves um, as fitting into a campaign like the one we've, we've um, been talking about. And so um, I'm going to turn it now um, to someone uh, who has really been, again, working on uh, efforts to get children enrolled in Medicaid and CHIP for quite a long time in many, many different creative ways. And um, that's Laura Guerra Cardas, who is the Associate Director of Children's Defense Fund in Texas. Um, that is not a picture of Laura on your screen, but um, Laura is going to talk a little bit about what's been happening in her area. She's based in Harris County in Houston, Texas, and just give uh, some thoughts about where um, the activities that we've been discussing might fit in and where she might fit in and her organization and organizations in her area might fit in with what we are envisioning. Um, Laura, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, I'm so happy to be here, and I think that picture is very funny. Um, definitely do not look like that. Um, but uh, I know that there's a big crowd on, on the call, and that there's many um, groups that are very talented with outreach and application assistance for CHIP and Medicaid. Um, so I'll just briefly go over um, some of the key strategies we focus on, and then our thoughts about um, how we see um, the work that um, is being presented here is fitting in. Um, I'm part of the Children's Defense Fund of Texas, as, as was mentioned, and um, since our inception over 10 years ago, we have been um, reaching out to uninsured children and helping them uh, and their families enroll in CHIP and Medicaid. Um, we learned pretty early on that the most effective outreach strategies were uh, when we went to where the populations we were targeting were. Um, so where do they shop? Um, what are the main places of business? Um, where do they eat? And of course, um, the school districts. Um, so in terms of working with businesses, um, we first started a relationship with uh, Fiesta Mart. It's a Texas-based grocery store chain that really targets the Latino community and actually now has expanded to really target a lot of minority communities. Um, and we have partnered with them for, for many, many years, doing everything from um, outreach events similar to the themes and waves that are being talked about here, but, but around um, you know, back to school, um, Valentine's Day, things like that. Um, but we've also at times had um, a day um, of the month that families could expect us to be at the stores ready to help them fill out applications. Um, uh, we saw that working with businesses was very successful. Um, and uh, since then, we've partnered with HEB, another grocery store chain, where, for example, we had uh, one enrollment drive that was only four hours long, and we um, were able to collect and submit 1,400 applications for kids. Um, Clear Channel, who provided billboards. Um, McDonald's, who provided tray liners with important information for families. And um, for me, two pieces that have really stood out on what makes a successful enrollment drive um, has one been um, working with the media to pu publicize the event. So when families come to our outreach events, we, we want them to come with their paycheck stubs, with their kids' social security uh, number, so that um, 
we can really finish the applications and even submit it for them. And then the other um, um, big piece has been um, helping them with the application, not just handing applications out. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the other main strategy that, that we focus on, which is working um, in school districts. So that's where we put a lot of our efforts right now. And what we like about it is that it's a systematic way of identifying and, and targeting um, uninsured children. We add a question on school enrollment forms that ask parents if their child is insured, not insured, if they're on CHIP or Medicaid. And um, when we collect that information and it's entered in, uh, you know, electronically, we basically have a database um, with the address and phone number for every uninsured child in the district. And then um, depending on the school we're working with, we have different um, methods of reaching out to those um, children. Uh, the reason that we're really excited about this project is we see it as a chance to reinvigorate our community outreach efforts. Um, as I said, we've been doing this for, for over 10 years. And, um, you know, when we first started our back to school event, uh, we had a big press conference. Um, you know, most of the media in Houston was coming out, was covering those. But in the last few years, we've seen that interest decline. Um, and understandably so. The media doesn't want to cover the same topic, the same thing year after year. So um, we'll, we're going to be using these waves as new hooks for the media um, and for the general public. Because um, in our enrollment drive, um, again, we've been doing this for many years. We've reached a lot of families, but we still have those hard to reach families out there. So we need to continuously be thinking about new ways um, to reach um, these families. And the last point I wanted to make is a bit of a sub-point, but I do see the conversation about health care, um, that it's been changing since the implementation of, or the passage of health care reform and now the implementation. And I do con see it continuing to develop and change um, to issues of health beyond coverage. Um, and I see the community interested in having that conversation. So I think... Um, you know, including topics that are around health um, uh, and then tying onto them the enrollment opportunities is a way to help keep us relevant and, and engaged with those interests of our community. And, and I hope that, that covers it, but I'm, I'm happy to expand on, on anything you'd like. Great. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, and we'll be, um, we'll be looking forward to just um, working with you on that refresher that you talked about, and I think that's going to be true for a lot of folks um, who are looking for some, uh, just, just a new jolt in uh, the, getting their outreach efforts to um, ramp up once again in this, this next phase. Um, I think um, it would, this would be a good time uh, to turn back to the folks at G GMMB. I think we're going to hear from Christine now, who's going to talk about how the um, how the structure of the campaign is going to be um, set up so that, again, wherever you are in the country, whether it's a target market or not, um, you'll be able to participate and get some uh, technical help and other assistance from our uh, Connecting Kids to Coverage team. So, um, Christine, I think it's yours. That's exactly right. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Christine Gluns, and I'm the field director for the campaign. On behalf of the field team, I want to let you know how excited we are to work with you on this effort. As Allison mentioned previously, we are ready. Our team uh, will provide direct support in the 10, markets, 10 target markets, and will provide wave-specific support to organizations that are outside our target markets. So we are splitting up the field team in two regions, and of course we know this is a very broad way to split up the country, but we want to make sure that we are directing and answering requests and questions just as quickly as possible, and that everybody has a home. So Kate Kreps, originally from Chicago, as you uh, are, I'm sorry, I'm originally from Chicago, but um, Kate Kreps, originally from Ohio, will uh, take the northeast and central areas. You see um, her section in the purple area, and Riley Green, um, who is originally from Georgia, will take the southeast. Uh, Ashley McVale, who is originally from Texas, will take the west. 
And if an organization calls us for um, or contacts us via email for technical assistance and support, the call or email will be directed to the regional field desk representing that state. And they will respond within one business day. So if you're um, in an organization from Michigan, for example, and you have a question, you will be directed to Kate uh, from North Carolina. Riley can help you. Or if you're um, in an organization and you're in Colorado, Ashley will be there to help you. So we'll provide you um, the field contact information in just one moment. But uh, before we do that, I just want to go through how we are going to help. Um, we want to help, as uh, Donna mentioned, organizations throughout the country, not just the target markets, who are interested in implementing their own wave events and provide the technical support they may need. Um, for, for organizations outside our target markets, this means we will provide help and guidance on how to plan an event, information, information on messaging that is working best in target audiences. We'll provide template materials that we've been using, um, tips on earned media, and other resources that will support outreach and encourage local participation. So there are a couple ways to reach the field team. Um, you can call us at 1-855-313-KIDS, or you can email us at insurekidsnow at gmmb.com. And as I mentioned, we are going to work very hard to get all, all um, calls answered, questions answered, et cetera, within one business day. Um, I also want to mention some additional training options that will be available to you through these webinars. And we will be hosting these on a regular basis. So we want to offer tools um, to help enroll as many kids as possible through these webinars by um, detailing out um, the waves of activities, offering tips and templates, you know, share best practices, and answer questions to help organizations hit the ground running. They will focus on um, topics including partnership outreach, messages, messages and messengers, how to work with the media, how to reach diverse audiences, tips on working with teens, and finally, web, social media, and mobile marketing. So I think that pretty much covers um, our areas. And I think I am going to turn it over now to Sandy. You know what, I just, just a quick reminder, everybody. I, I know we went quickly through those phone numbers and email. Our chat team is going to put that up on the, on the chat as well. They probably already have. Um, and we will mention this again in the Q&A as well, those phone numbers and emails. We know we went quick on that. Um, and I think we're going to pass it back to Donna. Great. Donna thanks. And, and, and thanks, Christine. I know we'll have a lot of questions from folks about um, exactly what kind of help they're going to be able to get from the field desk. So don't go, don't go too far. No, um, we will be here. Great. Our last, our last speaker is um, Lorez Meinholz. Lorez is the Deputy Executive Director in the um, Office of Community Partnership in um, uh, the state of Colorado. Um, it's the Colorado Department of Healthcare Policy. Um, and we asked Perez to just talk a little bit about what is happening in the state of Colorado with respect to outreach, but more importantly, um, to give us a sense of how states could benefit from the kinds of activities that are going to be going on through this campaign. Um, again, whether or not you're in one of the target markets. So, um, Lorez, I think you've joined us. Are you there? And you know what? We, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty um, with Lorez. So, Lorez, if you can hear us, uh, Lorez is on her cell phone, uh, try pressing pound 888 pound. We're making you go through a special quiz to get through there. Pound 888 pound. We're going to give you a second. Can you hear us? Hey. This is great. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you. So I also don't want to stand in the way of really good questions I know you guys have. But, um, you know, for us, uh, a lot of Colorado's success relies on the extent to which we can ensure that Colorado children have access to the opportunities that they need to succeed. Um, we want to make sure that Colorado is a great state to be a kid, and we feel like these efforts are really going to help us move down that continuum, and that it's a real opportunity uh, to partner, to collaborate, not only with our national partners, but with our state partners. How do we learn from one another about the best practices? And really, what, as we move ahead with uh, with these efforts, 
is uh, how do we improve our communication? Because again, I think we all recognize we, we, we have done a lot of different things to outreach to get eligible, uh, eligible kids that are that, are, that have access to these programs, get them enrolled in the programs. And so the help and the, the learning opportunities around communications, the toolkits, the, the trainings, the technical assistance, the expertise, and really the opportunity to make it customize, customized for each state. So whether or not uh, you're a state, we're a partner, we really see some great value in this, in this peer learning, to really learn what's, what's working best in Texas, in, in other states where we can um, really figure out how we do this better and really reduce the number of uninsured kids. You know, again, we want to make sure that we create a great environment for kids. So making sure that we invest time and energy into making sure we're, we're getting and making those investments so that we are a healthier state is a great thing. So again, I don't want to stand in the way. We, we've done a lot of the traditional outreach we have uh, tried to use a lot of our community-based organizations and really recognize that these investments, while not even hard dollars, but really that expertise is going to make a huge difference for us as a state, for our community-based organizations that we partner with, with our medical assistance sites, that uh, if we can all say this consistently together in a way that resonates, that we can make Colorado a healthier state. So with that, I'll turn that back. Thanks so much, Lorez. Great. Thanks, Lorez. Great to hear from you, and thanks for the extra technological trick there. Um, and Donna, unless you have anything else, I'm going to move ahead to Q&A. that okay with you? Yes, I think this is, um, we have plenty of time to get um, people's questions and comments, so go for it. Great. We are right on schedule. So um, first, I'm just going to run through. We've been seeing some questions online, and that's been really helpful. I'm going to run through a couple of those first. Um, and just a reminder here that if you want to ask a question, you can do it a couple of ways. You can type it in that question box in your control panel, as many of you have. Thank you. But you can also click on that little raise your hand, that little hand icon on the control panel um, if you'd like to um, ask a question. So while we wait for some in the queue there, I can answer a couple of them quickly here. Um, in, from Puerto Rico, we heard when the materials for outreach will be available. Uh, we are working on them now. We've just begun the design process, so we expect them to be ready in January or early February. Uh, and we've also been asked about um, whether or not they will be materials you can order or they will be downloaded. We're working hard to make these materials as customizable as possible for download. And we recognize that, they, that everybody has really different needs, um, whether it's a state organization or a community group, you all have really different needs about what phone numbers or what logos you have, and even some of the thematics. So the team here is working really hard to figure out how we can make those as customizable as possible. We don't have an exact answer yet on what the format of that document will be, but they will be available for download. And as I mentioned, um, they'll be ready to um, beginning part of next year. Also, we've gotten lots of questions about the PowerPoint, um, how, we can access, how you can access a copy of this PowerPoint in the near future. Thank you, Kansas. Uh, and the PowerPoint will be up on the website tomorrow. And um, I think you can see there um, that the Insure Kids Now site, you can find that. Um, it's going to take a little bit longer on the, on the recorded downloads, but we'll have the slides up a little bit sooner. Uh, and we can even send a note out to everybody and let you know when all of that's up. And I think that we've got um, one raised hand here. Excuse me, I'm turning around. Go ahead, Ashley. Okay. Hold on, everybody. I'm just taking a look at the queue here. We're just going to unmute our, our questioner. Thanks for bearing with us. Nyla Williams, we're going to call on you. We're unmuting you now. Can you hear us? Nyla Williams? Change your mind? <laughs> OK. Um, Donna, you can help me answer a couple of other questions that have come through online here. Um, we did get a question from the Frederick County Health Department um, about, will the campaign be able to fit into the state health exchange and expansion outreach for some of these states moving forward? 
we've talked a lot about the fact that this is an important year. Uh, can you help us address how we can kind of integrate some of these materials or what people should be thinking about moving toward 2014? Sure. Um, first, I, I, we just um, want to reiterate that our campaign is going to start right away and lead us up to um, next uh, August or early September, if I'm not mistaken. And so we will be trying our best to help lay the groundwork for um, outreach going forward. But our main goal is really to focus on this coming year with respect to, um, again, getting the children who are currently eligible for coverage enrolled. But, there, but it will be a great opportunity to begin sharing new messaging with families so that they're prepared for what will be in store for them um, you know, in the future, in, in the very near future. So we'll be working um, very closely, certainly with um, you know, our state partners and others in, in helping to uh, seamlessly uh, bridge to, to the, new, um, uh, the, new, the new systems. And one of the things that we're very um, focused on is making sure that as application and renewal processes change, that our outreach partners on the ground know about um, how that's going to work and that they're able to convey those messages to families. And we have some other things that we're um, planning to help make that a smooth transition. This will be just one part of it. But again, the main focus for this campaign um, begins now and is focused on, on children um, and the Medicaid and CHIP program. Um, so I think, the, I think the answer is yes, we're going to take every opportunity we can to help lay that groundwork. Great. Thanks, Donna. Uh, we also got a question online about whether or not there will be videos for YouTube or others that could be played in waiting rooms, like in WIC offices and things. Um, I should mention that we, uh, we are working on a new PSA uh, with a great firm called GKV. And, um, and that will be something that really can be used multipurpose. It's something that you can use in partnerships with the media and send around some broadcast channels. But I think it's also something that you can use online and definitely in waiting rooms, too. We've seen some great success with that. So thank you. Uh, we had a couple of other questions here. Um, what is earned media? So when we talk a little bit about earned media versus paid media, um, it really is outreach to reporters. So any media coverage that we get, frankly, that we don't pay for, right? We earn it, which is we're pitching reporters uh, and getting them to write articles in, in papers. We'll be working on within each of the um, tools, the, each, excuse me, each of the toolkits. We'll have some earned media templates, so things like a, a press release that you can use to send around to reporters, a, a template community paper article talking about uh, reaching out to, um, to parents whose kids are in need of coverage. Uh, so that's how we talk a little bit about earned media. A couple of other questions online here. Um, when will you have a schedule of the training and informational webinars? Ashley McPhail, that's a good question. We will have those shortly after this. As part of this, when we send this out, and as we are finalizing all of our in the loop, um, but I would say that the next one, um, look for something starting in the new year. We're going to try and do these close to being bi-monthly, and of course, as need arises, we will work with you to sort of see what we need. Great. And Thanks, this is Donna. I would just add to that that we have some other opportunities at CMS to provide webinars on specific topics of interest related to outreach and enrollment. And so we are very interested in um, what topics are of interest to you. Um, we've actually been doing a little bit of polling among our, our CHIPRA outreach grantees um, to find out what what topics are um, of great interest to them. And so we'll be coordinating with the Connecting Kids to Coverage team to be sure that we're filling out as best as we can the great variety of, of outreach and enrollment uh, topics, whether they're policy and procedurally related or specifically campaign related. So. Um, we may have some opportunities for webinars and other activities 
in between those bi-monthly webinars that um, we just heard about. Great. Thanks, Donna. Uh, we have a few hands up here. Uh, I'm going to go first to um, Adrian Maddox. We're just unmuting you, Adrian, so bear with us. Can you hear us, Adrian? Okay. I'm also going to unmute here um, Timothy Jordan. Who also Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Uh, I'm a, uh, a developmental pediatrician in Arizona. Uh, and we're the only state that that uh, stopped kids care and it, and is now has severe restrictions on it. You know about that? Uh, yes, we know about that very intimately. Yeah, we're the only state, and nobody else knows about it. <laughs> uh, anyway, we need some special strategies here. Uh, what the state is doing is putting kids on a waiting list, and uh, at one point we had a hundred thousand kids on their so-called waiting list. And now they've, they've uh, made a new kids care, what they call kids care two, when they've lowered the uh, income requirements, uh, made it more stringent. In other words, it's just very complex. So uh, I think adding more complexity and, and uh, putting kids on and off the waiting list makes it even harder to, to attract people and to get them on the program. Uh, and, and this, the, and the, what do we, what, what should we do with this state? I mean, we need some special strategies uh, to, to, to get going here. Do you have any ideas? Well, let, let me just, let me just say two things. Um, this is, this is Don again, and thank you very much for your question. And it is a real, um, uh, important, important, uh, uh, I'm getting a echo. I don't know if anybody else is. Um, it's an important point to raise because Arizona is one of the states with um, very large numbers of eligible but uninsured children. I, I want to say two things. And one is that um, you're right that the um, recently the um, uh, the kid care waiting list was opened, if you will, and about 20,000 or so children were um, enrolled in the new Kids Care 2 program. And of course, that wasn't um, uh, perhaps all of the children that had been on the waiting list, but that did, that did help somewhat. The main thing to remember, though, I think, is that the Medicaid program is still open to children who are eligible. And so one of the things that is very important is to make sure that when families are looking for health coverage for their children, they still go ahead and apply because children who are eligible for Medicaid will be enrolled in Medicaid and get all of the health benefits um, to which they, um, for which they qualify. And um, we know from you know the past other states that may have had um, those same kinds of difficulties. Um, sometimes that message doesn't come through. Um, so we want to be sure that, that families know that the Medicaid program is, is open to them. Um, and so that's, that's one piece that I would just share. Okay, great. Thanks, Donna. I have been talking, so I'm just going to try to answer them. And, and forgive us, folks, we have gotten a lot of questions here. We might not be able to get through all of them, but I do assure you that we will answer them online as, we, as soon as we can. Uh, but just to recap on a few of them, um, Sarah Holmes asked a very good question, which is um, whether or not there will be materials in other languages than English. And yes, we will be doing... English on the front, Spanish on the back, and that's really a priority uh, thing for us to do. We're working on that now. Um, and someone else had asked if we could talk a little bit more about Hispanic outreach and the kind of help that we'll be providing there. We are partnering with a great firm called Urban Strategies who specializes in Hispanic outreach and is going to be helping us develop um, some specific materials and support reaching out to those communities. Uh, and helping us make, make sure that we've got a really community-driven, neighborhood-by-neighborhood approach so that we're really able to reach Hispanic families um, in ways that are accessible and also uh, ways that, you know, parents don't, 
parents are going to be near home. They won't have to bring a bunch of paperwork um, to get to a health fair, per se. So trying to do a lot that we can to drive that into communities. And um, those materials will be available as we work on these toolkits, which is a good segue into another question we received about the best way to know and to access materials as they are available. Uh, the field team will be sending out regular emails. Uh, it will be coming from that same Ensure Kids Now address. We'll be sending them certainly monthly, but we'll also send updates as, as we have other little nuggets or tidbits that uh, we think that you all uh, might want to know about. So we will do as best we can to proactively reach out to you to let you know that they're there. At the same time, we are making some adaptations to the Ensure Kids Now website. So we'll be keeping you informed about that, too, so you know exactly where to find those materials. And a good segue into materials is that uh, we've also been asked, uh, in terms of the template material and making them customizable, whether or not you can have the national phone number, the 1-877-KIDS-NOW number, or a local number, for example. And um, yes, our plan is to make it customizable so that you can do uh, you can put in whatever number you may need. That broaches a few of the top line questions. Do we have any more um, hands up in the queue? Okay. I think I did, um, Allison, see a couple of additional questions. Um, I, a couple of uh, Participants are asking about our next round of CHIPRA outreach grants. Um, and in fact, um, there will be another round of grants coming soon. We don't have an exact date, but we now have um, uh, an even larger list of people to alert when, those, um, when that solicitation comes out. And um, uh, we're, working, we're working hard to um, um, complete the work that we need to do to, to put that out. So um, you should have your, your eyes open for that. And uh, once again, the, um, uh, those grant activities will focus primarily on enrolling children who are eligible for Medicaid and CHIP and not yet signed up. But again, um, we will have an opportunity uh, again, lay the groundwork and, and um, stretch a little bit in terms of making sure that families know how things will be changing and how they can um, uh, navigate new application and uh, renewal systems. Great, Donna. Thank you. I appreciate you answering that question. Uh, you can help us with this one, too. We got a question from Pablo Mendoza, uh, which is a very important one, which is, how do we know if children are eligible for Medicaid and CHIP? Um, and where can they go to get some of that information? There are some great um, maps and some uh, charts on the Insure Kids Now site. We'd be happy to send around some of those links. Donna, that would be the best place to go, correct? Well, there is a, there is a wealth of information on um, Insure Kids Now. If you go to, um, there's a section for professionals, and um, we were thinking about outreach professionals in that section. Um, if you, um, there's a place to learn more about programs in your state. When you go there and click on um, your state in the map that you'll find there, it'll take you to your state website, the application for applying for coverage in your state, um, and other uh, information that will tell you about the programs um, where you live. Um, there are many, many organizations, as we heard at the top of this call, who have been working on outreach and enrollment for a very long time. And I think, as Laura mentioned, um, one of the really important pieces of outreach and enrollment is application assistance for families. And so um, locating those organizations, whether they're community health centers, um, certainly the state agency itself, um, other uh, community-based groups that help with application assistance, they often um, will be able to give um, more information about who is eligible um, uh, in, your, in, your, in your particular state and answer questions about particular families. Um, we do know that um, over time, uh, states have greatly expanded the eligibility, the income eligibility limits for uh, children's health coverage through Medicaid and CHIP. We have, um, uh, uh, we used to have uh, 
the median income eligibility for children at about 200 percent of the federal poverty line. Um, so many states have expanded for children that the median income eligibility is now um, in the 240 percent of poverty range. So one important message for families is your child may be eligible even if you don't think you qualify. And um, we really want to encourage families to qualify if their children, uh, to apply if their children need health, health insurance because they may be surprised that um, their children actually can, uh, can qualify and get enrolled. Great. Donna, thank you. Um, and we have just come up on, on 4.30 Eastern time here and we want to be mindful of everyone's time. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for joining the webinar today. There is, as you can uh, see, and I hope you've heard, a lot more to come. We are, are really just getting started in this and really eager to hear from you. So just as a reminder here, uh, you can find a lot of the materials that Donna just talked about on the Insure Kids Now site. That's www.insurekidsnow.gov. You can reach the field team that's offering technical assistance and support at uh, 1-855-313-KIDS. We did our best to make it as memorable as possible. That's as far as we could take it. And you can email us at insurekidsnow at gmmb, like gmarymaryboy.com. We are eager to hear from you. Uh, for those of you uh, uh, whose questions we weren't able to get to, please do feel free to email us at that address, and we will do our very best to get back with you as quickly as possible with the questions we can indeed answer. And, uh, and I'll just say for now, until next time, you'll hear from us online. Uh, and lots more to come. Thanks so much for your time.